Rebonjour les amis. Alors dans le cadre de mon, ma recherche pour pouvoir montrer à notre gouvernement, à l'Institut National du Cancer, que le cancer est une maladie métabolique, avec beaucoup d'autres, voilà que je reçois de l'aide de mon ami Thomas Siefried et Eric Berg. Allons-y. Alors, avant que je démarre, je vais mettre cette vidéo sur mon site de manière à ce que certains d'entre vous qui connaissent bien l'anglais puissent la traduire en français et immédiatement j'accepterai. Alors, que nous dit euh, ce monsieur Eric Berg qui est un de mes médecins préférés, qui nous donne des informations extraordinaires tout le long de l'année sur des quantités de sujets. Alors là, il est en train de nous expliquer que 90 à 95 des maladies sont métaboliques et non pas génétique. C'est là-dessus que se bat Tom Siefried, c'est là-dessus que se bat Laurent Schwartz. Il nous explique les, dama, les damages, c'est-à-dire les, 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 les dommages faits à la mitochondria. Et euh, voilà, et il, nous, bon, il nous explique tout ça. Donc, je vais simplement mettre cette vidéo et je vous demande si parmi vous, quelqu'un est suffisamment fluente pour traduire ceci intelligemment. Je vous en remercie. Très bonne visualisation. Au revoir. La question est, combien de votre maladie est génétique et combien de votre santé est génétique Sometimes people might tell you, you know, it's all in the genes. I was just born with bad genes and there's nothing you can do. You need to pick your parents more wisely next time. That is absolutely not true. Only five to 10% of disease is caused by some genetic defect that is passed down from your parents. It doesn't mean that you're going to get that disease. There's a really good book um, that I'm reading, Cancer as a Metabolic Disease by Thomas Seyfried, this guy is like the expert in cancer. And what he says, and I'm just paraphrasing, when you see tumors in cancer, you do see a lot of genetic mutations. But those mutations, those alterations in genes are downstream. In other words, they're symptoms, they're not causes of the cancer, they're symptoms of the damage in the mitochondria, the machinery where you're burning fuel. That's the first thing that gets damaged And then the uh, mitochondria adapts to a different metabolism called fermentation. And because the mitochondria has its own DNA and they're not protected like the DNA in the nucleus, okay, because they're outside the nucleus, they're very susceptible to mutations and alterations in the DNA. And that's probably one of the reasons why you see so many gene mutations in tumors and cancer because of this fact. So most of the gene mutations are not inherited. They're what's called somatic mutations. Let me define somatic mutations. It basically means not inherited, but caused by your environment. Let's take a look. Okay, here's another word for you. It's called epigenetics. That means above genetics. So if DNA is uh, DVDs, The DVD player would be the epigenetics. So you can select what song or what playlist that you want to activate, okay? So epigenetics is all about controlling your genes and activating your genes because your genes don't really do anything. They're like the blueprints. They have to be activated or what is called silenced or not activated. But here's the thing, 90 to 95% of your health and whether you get a disease is epigenetics. Now I'm going to give you one more word, okay, and then that's it for the words. Exposome, okay, this is a word that means the accumulation 
of all the exposures of an individual in a lifetime and how those exposures relate to health. And we're talking about the accumulation of exposure to your environment. And this starts before you were born, when you're in the womb, what your mother ate, the stress that she experienced, all that adds up that can eventually trigger certain genes that lead to certain diseases. So epigenetics we include all the environmental factors, the stresses, the social experiences as a child, and especially the nutrition and what you eat and what you don't eat. Because if you're deficient in certain nutrients, it makes you very, very susceptible to getting all sorts of diseases. So the nutrition is a, is a really important factor in protecting you against um, DNA damage and supporting also the repair of DNA so it can prevent the mutations and alterations that then lead to disease. And I really believe that another huge factor that's equivalent to your environment with epigenetics is your attitude and your mental state, how you view things, how you deal with life. Are you in fear all the time and worried about things versus do you have a relaxed mental attitude about it? I think that's a really important factor. But the main message for this video is this. Your genes have a lot less to do uh, with your health and you have the ability to control your genes way more than you think. So don't buy into this whole concept that everything is genetic and you're uh, predestined to certain diseases. That's not true because you can control your health because your lifestyle and your attitude are a senior factor in this. I put another video down below to give you additional information about epigenetics. Thanks for watching. Alors, vous avez vu, vous avez compris, je suppose. Alors, je trouve plus ma petite... Euh, non, elle n'est pas là. Alors, me voilà. Me voilà de nouveau, en grand. Alors, vous avez compris qu'il nous faudrait votre aide, les amis, pour traduire cette vidéo très importante. J'aimerais bien pouvoir la présenter à nos instances supérieures, à l'Institut National du Cancer, au milieu de toutes les autres que j'ai déjà réunies. Elle est courte, elle est précise, à son habitude. Bravo Eric, comme d'habitude, un sans faute. Très bonne journée. Au revoir.